Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have a brand new show. We are a few minutes shorter this week because our PBS stations are in pledge right now, but we have a lot of brand new stuff all from the Upper Peninsula. We were recently up there trying to do a little walleye fishing, but the conditions were so rough that we couldn't really get out on the water. So we looked for a few other things in the upper to do. And I tell you what, we stopped in at the Antique Snowmobile Museum in Nobinway, and they were having an event up there. It was a ton of fun. You won't want to miss that. Then we headed a little further west to Rapid River Knives to see what goes into making some knives there in the Upper Peninsula. So lots of cool stuff, all from US2 on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information about the 2022 models, anglerquestpontoons.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. Here in Nobinway today for the Antique Snowmobile Festival that's going on. It's uh, about single degree uh, temperatures, blowing sideways right now. The sun is out for a little bit, but we're going to kind of just wander through here. We're up here ice fishing. We heard about this festival, so we thought, hey, let's stop by, see what it's all about. And hopefully, we'll find some of these uh, snowmobile owners that can talk about some of their old sleds. So um, it's pretty cool. We're uh, <laughs> I don't, really don't know what to expect, but let's go for a walk and see if we can find a little bit more about the the festival and the museum that's here in town as well. All right, Charlie, what is going on here today in Nobinway? Today is our 30th annual show and ride. Uh, 30 years we've 30 been years. here, and today we're lined them up. Uh, yesterday we had our vintage ride. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we had our uh, rear engine ride. Uh, today is lined up here, and that 12 inch of snow we got last night should have been a week ago. <laughs> but we're dealing with it. Yeah, so you've been doing this for 30 years. Where do people come? Is it all from Michigan or all over the Midwest? Oh, or? there's from South Dakota, uh, really? Minnesota, Ohio. Uh, usually the Canadians come, but they're not. we got followers from Quebec and Ontario that are usually here. Barry Graham, the Husky Guru. Wow. But they didn't make it this year because of the border stuff. But okay. Yeah, all over. The southern... South Dakota guy, he was here all week with us. The huh. Minnesota guys were here all week with us. The Ohio guys were here all week with us. Now I'm forgetting somebody. Wisconsin too, of course. Uh, Lower Michigan, all over. So uh, these are some pretty old sleds. Uh, what is, is this? Yeah, a... There are some very, very rare sleds here. This air sled's like one of ten made. Uh, really? There's some really unique stuff here. And of course, have you been in the museum yet? I was just going to ask you. Tell me there's... what's in the museum over there. There's 185, and there's some really one-of-a-kind stuff, one of three, one of two, some Ellis Chalmers, a Honda. Okay. A Honda snowmobile, yes, a Honda. <laughs> um, di some different stuff. This is the one I took on our three-day ride. Three days, 100 miles. Three days, 100 miles. Now, how it's many people? It's called a rear engine. Okay. Rear engine only. Um, 
How many guys? Like 15 or 20 of us went on okay. the rear engines. Wow. Yes, and some got towed back. What's the attraction of these old sleds? I've got to have a hobby of some sport. Why <laughs> collect stamps? Why collect coins? That, you can build a plane with this stuff. That's a good point. And, um, you know, mosquito free, no black flies. It's awesome. <laughs> How did you get any better? How did you get into this whole thing? I, after I got out of the Army, I talked my dad into being a Viking dealer, and it's been snow sleds ever since. Wow. We had a Husky as kids. Uh, that's when my dad, there's eight of us. Uh, and dad's first sled was a Husky. Then I got drafted, and then I got out. I talked him into being a Viking dealer, and it's been snowmobiles ever since. Well, as you can see, Charlie is quite the guy. To get a little bit better perspective on today's events, I talked with his daughter, Michelle. And Michelle, tell me, what, uh, how are you involved in this whole thing here today? Well, I basically was born and raised in this almost, if you, it feels like anyways, <laughs> because ever since I've been little, um, my dad, who's Charlie Vallier, who runs the Snowmobile Museum, has... Yeah. Anytime we go somewhere, we'd be like, we'd be driving by somebody's farmer field and he'd eagle eye a snowmobile out in the back 40 and we'd be going back there to get it. Wow. You know, so um, it's always kind of been like that. And in the beginning, you know, my mom was like, please don't bring another one home. <laughs> and um, look at here we are today, you know, with all of this. He always said that he wanted to, someday there was going to be a museum, you know. Wow, and, that's really cool. Yeah, now tell so, me a little about this whole snowmobiling, you, you know, culture and people. They're kind of a cool group. Um, the snowmobile community is an amazing group of people. Uh, they stick together, they help each other when anybody has something going on. Um, even during these rides here, you know, if somebody breaks down, somebody else is helping you, somebody's got parts, somebody's mm -hmm. going to lend a hand to make sure you get going again. It's kind of like that even in um, the new sled world too, you know, most of the time if you got a friend that needs help, they're they're, they're going to be there for you. Okay, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Robert Morris. I'm from Gaylord. Okay, now what in the world is this thing here? Uh, this is a mini bike I actually built for my friend. So I want to do something with it in the winter, so I put a ski on it. <laughs> just had some time to kill one day or what? Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? Oh yeah, you just not see me driving now? No, I didn't, but I, I believe you. Wow. It'll go about... Uh, 30 right now really? if I'm feeling dangerous. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Have you been to this snowmobile thing here before? Uh, no. Okay, so it just came up for the day? Yeah. Awesome. Never seen one of those before? No. Okay, let's give me your name and where are you from? Larry Rasper from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, and you are? Mitchell Rasper from Grand Haven, Michigan. Okay, now what brought you guys out here today for this this uh, crazy festival? This is our first event, so we just we, we've my son has redone the one here, and I've got the other one, and we just really wanted to uh, see what the events are all about. And we, we like old snowmobiles. We've had these this style of snowmobiles since I was a child. So yeah, tell me a little bit about these sleds here. How old are they, and and do you use them all the time, or just once in a while? Um, we, well, we just got them back on the trail, you might oh, say. Okay. So um, we uh, they're 1969 Bolins Diablo Rouge. Wow. So they were, they were, you know, they were originally owned a Husky. They started out as a Husky, and then Mullins bought Husky, you know. And uh, they, um, I guess they're, uh, they're fun machines. They're, they're from the beginning of the, of the era with all, many of these machines. So it's a really interesting, uh, really interesting to see all the different yeah, styles. Yeah, a lot of them. Them. Now, how did you guys hear about this festival? Um, so we got a we got a cabin up here, and we we snowmobile on our modern modern day sleds, okay, and trails and stuff. It. So and this is your first time here to this one? Yep. Nice. Yep. First time Passed here. by here quite a bit, and figured we'd come this year and see what's That's all about. Cool. There's a lot of old sleds here. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, it was a ton of fun seeing all these sleds and meeting a lot of really great people. It was time for me to head across the street to the museum and have Charlie give us a little bit of a tour. Tell me a little bit about this uh, motor toboggan here. This is yes. kind of a similar to the very first sled ever made. This this isn't the first one. The company is the first one. Elias and Motor Toboggan was the first in Center, Wisconsin, in 1924. This is a 1946. His first one. Um, he made one the first year for trapping. He was a trapper. Wanted to get further back into the woods trapping. He had a bad leg, um, and that's why the snowshoes are on it because he only goes so far and then put the snowshoes on to go down to the creek to get his beaver out or whatever he was wow. getting. Um, but then in 19, 1939 or 1940, the military wanted to buy 200. He couldn't produce 200, so he contracted with the four-wheel drive company to uh, produce the first 200 sleds. So that's why he's been now blessed with the first manufactured sled. Okay. And because and, and we didn't have snowmobile motors, 
they yeah, put yeah. Indian motorcycle engine on Isn't this that one. Something? And that one's got, still got a kickstart on it's it. It's got the kickstart. This runs. We have video of it running about four or five years ago. The guy that owns it lives in Ohio. Um, yeah, it ran four or five years ago. It'll run again. And what are some of these other sleds that are in here? Oh, there's we're, we're... Very, some very unique. Um, there's a Timberwolf over there. We like our stuff made in Michigan. So the Timberwolf, the orange thing, uh, they made eight of them in Sioux, Michigan. We know where I tracked four down. We have this one. I have the race version in my garage. I tracked one down, it burnt in a fire, and one went to a crusher. So there's oh. four still out there. Try and find those four. Uh, but it's kind of cool that it was made in Sioux, Michigan, only eight of them. Uh, we restored it. That sled there also was the pay sled at the Sioux Y500 in 1970, that sled. Wow. So we restored it, and my granddaughter and I took it around the track in 2013. We were the pay sled for the vintage lab that really with cool. that machine. Now, what's the one that looks like an old car over there? Okay, that was a, it's called a snow coop. They made, it's got the end of our company, bought 200 Polaris Voyager bottoms, the tracks, the chassis, skis, and then the end of our company put uh, their top, fiberglass tops on them and called them snow coops. There was only 200 of those made. They were gold, blue, and red. Wow. Did I say that right? Gold, blue, and red, I believe. Um, but only 200 of them made. But it's all Polaris, the motor... The track, the skis, it's all Polaris. Wow. But Polaris wants nothing to do with it. It's really? A, it's a snow coop made by Innovar. Jeez. Not a Polaris. Now, where do all these sleds come from that are in here? Did oh. you, do you personally go out and find them? Oh, do I'm, people bring them here? I'm glad you asked because I forgot, almost forgot about Bombardier's Museum. Um, I've got a lot of my personal collection in here. This guy that owns this has got a lot of his personal collection in here. And then there's other individuals that have them on loan. Some have been donated to the museum in memory of Grandpa or mm. Uncle Joe. Like this one right here. That one right there have also been donated to the museum, and the other ones are just here on loan. Okay. Um, but we got to back up right here. Bombardier, yeah. you, Belcourt, Quebec, they, they redid their museum in, four years ago to honor the man Bombardier. So all of their Arty Cats and Polaris and Fox Tracks and all the weird stuff they were getting rid of because they were honoring the man Bombardier. Hmm. So they chose this museum to give 33 sleds to. Very wow. cool. And it's got that... Right here, anything with this oval, uh, this is part of the agreement we have to have on the sled. Okay. This snowmobile is gifted to the Top Lake Snowmobile Museum by Bombardier. But Bombardier's made in Belcourt, Quebec. Big company, been in business for a long time. Got a lot of money. They've got a beautiful, beautiful museum. Hmm. But they, do, they chose this museum to give 33 sleds to. That's awesome. And so you'll see them throughout the, out the building. Like this is one of 21 built. This, this is a wow. prototype, 1966. Uh, there are only 21 of those were built. So we'd have a tough time having one of those if it wasn't for Bombardier. And there's a few other sleds back here the same way. We'd have a tough time finding it. Now, I, the little, little mouse told me that you were recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, we were. <laughs> and Hall of Fame of snowmobiling, or what it's was it? It's called the International Snowmobile Hall of Fame out of Eagle River, Eagle River Wisconsin. My wife and I, Marilyn and I both, okay. we were inducted. There's a plaque on the wall. That's awesome. So yeah. You're, so you're yeah. a legit... Uh... I'm legit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much, but I know snow sleds. If you find yourself in the UP and heading through Knobbin Way, may I suggest you stop at the Snowmobile Museum. If nothing else, listening to Charlie talk about these sleds, well, it's worth your time. And if you really want the full effect, this special event happens every year. So many great spots to explore in the UP, so get up here if you can and take in the sights and sounds of a day on US2. Well, we did have a ton of fun right there in Knobbin Way on US 2, and since we were looking for more things happening in the Upper Peninsula, we headed west and stopped in at Rapid River Knives, a place you may want to check out. Rapid River Knives was started in 2002. Uh, it started off with Chris Durson and Rick Durson, a father and son team. It started off in his dad's garage. Um, they did a lot of custom knives, repair knives, stuff like that. Um, in 2000, late 2002, they moved into a building right downtown Rapid River. And from there, it's just been growing and growing and growing. And here we are, you know, 
20 years later, we're sitting in a 10,000 square foot building where we sell typically about 10,000 knives a year. I mean, we started off in just a little tiny side of this building and we finally got to the point where we needed something big to make a destination for people to come up here. People love coming in here. They look at the mounts. You can go to the windows. You can watch knives being made through the windows. We wanted it more of a destination place than just a store. We wanted people to come here and experience the knife making. After checking out the showroom and learning a little bit more about the company history, we decided to head back to the workshop and see how these knives are made. Okay, this is the assembly portion of the stations. Um, Andy here is actually taking a raw burl, which started off looking like this, and it'll go through a stabilizing process where it'll actually suck all of the air out of the wood and replace it with an epoxy. After that's done, then it gets casted with multiple colors. We do orange, blues, reds, clear, pretty much anything anybody wants. Ends up looking like that. You've got the wood here at the bottom, and then you got the epoxy here at the top. After that, it's gonna get cut down and shaped into a set of scales that look like this. After that's done, then it's gonna get pinned and glued onto your knife. And then once all that's done, it's clamped. It takes about 24 hours for the epoxy to dry and harden good. Then it'll come into the back where it'll get shaped and turned into a regular handled knife. After knives are fully assembled, they come back here. This is the first step of the belt they go to. They're gonna start off coming back here. They're gonna look pretty crude, pretty ugly, about like that. After they go through the first belt, this is a 36 grit belt. They will be down to a shape like this, where it's all the perimeters all done, everything shaped. After that step, they move over to him, and then the 80 grit belt is where all the actual shaping is done. After that, it's just cleaning up scratches, going through the line to different belt grates. We'll go to a 320 to a 600, then they go over to our polishing wheels. They'll get polished, and then they'll get sharpened, and then they're set to go out front and go out for sale. From start to finish, it is quite the process to put these knives together, and every one is just a little bit different. Well, uh, there, there are no jigs or anything like that in the back that give us a shape or, everybody's kind of got their own little craft that they like to do with a knife. That's one of the things that make knives made here, they're custom, they're, there's no two alike. If I make it, or if some of the other guys make them, you, they, don't, they look totally different. They get to put their own feel into that knife. Like I said, these are part of people's heritage, their traditions. So a lot of it's like grandpa's first deer. You know, they want a knife made out of the antler as a sentimental thing, you know. They were with their grandpa when it got shot. Grandpa's gone now. So we'll take that antler, we'll make it into a knife for them, and that's something they can carry for years to come and use on all their hunts. So it's not just making knives, it's also you're a part of their journey when they go out on their hunts. It's always nice to see Michigan companies doing well in the outdoor landscape. Special thanks to Matt and the crew for showing us around.
Well, hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or if you want to see something again, you can always check out our website and run most of the social media platforms if you want to see what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. Lots of brand new stuff coming. We have been out taping a lot of different variety of stuff. we got a little bit more ice fishing for you. We have a sit down with the DNR, a sit down with some a round table discussion with charter boat captains. So much happening right now in the state of Michigan. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Showspan, producing consumer shows that include the ultimate sports show in Grand Rapids. Over 350 exhibitors, outdoor gear, boats, seminars, Lake Ultimate, and Big Buck Night. The ultimate sports show at the DeVos Place in Grand Rapids. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to fire away stays with me night and day it's the road that leads to my home state i am a michigan man changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream the white tailed deer in the tall pine trees i am a michigan man i am i am a michigan man that's where i'm from and i'll show you my hands lord above i love this land i St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love